Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Colin Suarez, Chair of the Art and Arcade CPAC. Thank you for joining us tonight. Would like to direct the uh, clerk of the board to call the meeting to order. Uh, and at this time, I would like to call roll. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Okay. Uh, can we, uh, Member Roten? Uh, Member Schiff? Present. Member Biller? Member Biller? Uh, present. Member Scarla? Member Svarla? I do. Uh, Member Turner? Present. Okay. And I do see Member Svarla. I just don't know if I can hear him. Uh, we do have a quorum with all members present. Okay, well, we've, we've got the quorum, so uh, Member Scabarla, when you get the microphone figured out, just uh, holler and, and announce present. Uh, at this time, I would like to lead uh, everyone uh, remotely in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you would. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance Against to the flag, flag of the United States of America. Of America. And to the Republic, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Um, so, of course. And before we begin um, any further, I do need to read the clerk statement here. Um, so, this meeting is live stream and temporarily closed to in person public participation. The clerk's office is in the process of hosting hybrid public meetings that will provide board members and members of the public with the option to participate in the meeting, either in person or remotely. Thank you for your patience and support. To make a verbal comment at today's meeting, dial 916-875-2501 to provide your contact information. When the chair opens public comment for a specific agenda item or off agenda matter, Callers will be contacted by phone and transferred into the meeting to make their public comment. Written comments are always accepted. You can send your email comment to boardclerk at sackcounty.net. Your, uh, your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And that's all I have for announcements. All right, thank you very much. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like <clears throat> to go around and have everyone introduce ourselves, but before I do that, uh, I would like to let everyone paying attention at home. Uh, this is the Art and Arcade Community Planning Advisory Council. Uh, we are your friends, we're your neighbors. Uh, we are volunteers who serve in the community on behalf of folks wide from uh, one end to the other of the county territory. No decision we make here is final. Uh, this is an advisory body. However, we do make recommendations to the planning and zoning commissions, as well as the Board of the Supervisors. So I would ask that you uh, bear with us, uh, treat everyone with respect, and have a good time. All right, with that, uh, we will start with introductions. My name is Colin Suarez, current chair of the CPAC. I've been a member of the CPAC for uh, about three years now. I live in the uh, Arden Park community. Uh, Vice Chair Schiff. Hi, thank you. This is uh, Damien Schiff. I live with my family in the, the Del Norte Woods section of um, Arden Arcade. I've been on the CPAC for a little over three years as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, Member Biller. Hi, right, Bo Biller. I think I'm a probably one of the most recent appointees uh, to the uh, CPAC, and I live here in Sierra Oaks, and apologize for missing the last meeting. 
No worries. We're glad to have you back. Uh, member Scavarla, let's see if, if we got you live. All right. Uh, can you guys hear me now? We can. Okay. We can. There Thank you. you. Uh, yeah, Mikhail Scavarla. Um, live here in Arden Park and a uh, newer member of the board. All right. Thank you. Uh, member Turner. Steve Turner, I live in Sierra Oaks Vista. I've been a member on the on the advisory committee for three years and uh, have worked uh, here in the Arden area for about 30 years as a firefighter. Thank you very much. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Member Roten. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Tom Roten. Um, I grew up here in Arden Arcade. I've been on the uh, CPAC for a number of years, I think maybe even four. Um, so, uh, anyhow, I live with my family in the uh, Del Paso Mano area, area and uh, happy to be here tonight. Great. Well, that is everyone. We have a uh, full hearing body today. Uh, now I will go to the clerk of the board. Are there any announcements specific for the CPAC before we begin? At this time, there is no announcements. Fantastic. All right, then moving right along. Uh, do we have Ms. True from the planning office? Yes, I'm here. All right, then take us away, Ms. True. Excellent. You need to call the item into record uh, before we uh, you continue, Ms. True. I do apologize. Yes, it's okay. Got to uh, adhere to Robert's rules. Uh, <laughs> item number one, uh, PLNP 2021-00181, Maury Fence. A, uh, Special Development Permit Request. Ms. True, please. Thank you, good evening. My name is Rebecca True, and I am the lead planner with Sacramento County on the Tamori Fence Project. Next slide, please. This project is located at 3337 Sierra Oaks Drive, approximately 70 feet southeast from the intersection of Sierra Oaks and Larch Lane in the Arden Arcade community. The site contains an existing residential home and fence. Next slide, please. The site is zoned RD3 residential and is surrounded by RD3 residential on all sides. Next slide, please. Based on Sacramento County records, we know the following to be true. The current owners purchased the property in 2016. There was an existing home on site, which was demolished in 2017. And the fence that was there was also demolished and reconstructed in 2018. The picture on screen is what the applicant provided to us depicting the previous fence. After that, a new home with a swimming pool and pool house was constructed in 2019. Last year, we received a 311 complaint that the property had a fence exceeding the county development standard of seven feet in height, and this was soon verified as a code violation. Next slide, please. The applicant's request is for a special development permit to legalize the residential fence that exceeds the county standard of seven feet in height. Next slide, please. This is a site plan of the existing residential home and other uses on site enclosed by the existing fence. Next slide, please. The fence is noticeable from the public right of way as seen on this slide and the next slide, please. This slide shows the fence from the left and the right side of the house respectively. Next slide, please. The fence panels are one foot wide and six feet tall and topped with 16 inches of diagonal lattice. In total, the fence stands eight feet, one and a half inches tall in the middle of the fence and decreases slightly at eight feet and a quarter inch tall towards the ends of the fence. The length of the fence is 178 feet long, extending around the entirety of the rear yard and connecting the two side yards. According to the applicant, this current fence was built to the same specifications and design as the previous fence that was existing prior to the applicant acquiring the property. Next slide, please. 
That concludes my presentation and I'll take any questions now. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ms. True. Uh, is owner of the property a representative of the owner here on the line at this time? Yes, this is uh, Robert Tellison. I'm here with uh, Mr. Dr. Tamari and Elisa, who is my assistant. Fantastic. If you could just walk us through uh, well, what the, if you could walk us through the uh, the fence design and what the plan is, appreciate it. So uh, it's correct that the, there was an existing home that was torn down. Uh, the back fence that you see where it was uh, falling down, that fence backs up to the neighbor behind this property. That fence was never taken down. That's just um, been there the whole time. It's just it does show that you know that part of it was failing. That was part of the fence on both sides. So there the. The fence was either replaced or repaired on the sides back to its original condition. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so at this time, I'm uh, just going to open it up to questions or comments from the members of the CPAC, mm -hmm. and then we will open it up to uh, any public comments that may be. So is there a member of the CPAC that would like to ask a question of the applicant or the county or make a comment? Uh, this is uh, Damien Schiff. I, I have a uh, two, two uh, quick questions. Uh, one is uh, with respect to to the fence that, that is, I was a little confused with, with respect to the fence that's still there. So the image that we saw that was the fence uh, as it originally was, part of that fence is still standing, and that and that part of it was replaced. And the part that was replaced is the same height as the original fence that's still standing. Is is that correct? Yes, that's correct. The fence that was still in good shape was left standing. The other fences were replaced or repaired to the same exact condition and height style completely like it was before. And uh, do you know um, about how long that that prior fence had been in place? I personally don't. I can, uh, I doubt Mr. Tamari knows. Um, hi, this is Sam Tamori. I am the owner of that uh, property. And when I bought that property, fence was in a very bad shape. <clears throat> I, the only one piece at the corner that you saw was in a good shape. So I got my permit. I got the permit for the landscape from the county. They came and they check everything and then they give us the owner occupancy and we moved in and they saw the fence that time. Nobody told me that should not be more than seven feet. So uh, and I told the builder to build it the same way the fence was. I did not change anything in that fence. And let me explain it to you. I am a medical doctor. I am not the contractor. I am not the developer. I am not the architect or designer. I went through everything through the legal things. I got the permit. I got the final permit, final allowance, and then I moved in. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. My my last question is just: um, is is this fence considered a, a boundary fence, or is it is it entirely on 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 your your property? It's 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 right on the property line. So it it has a neighbor on the right and a neighbor on the left and a neighbor to the back. And and to to, to your knowledge, has has any neighbor objected to to the fence work? No, not to our knowledge, no. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, oh, Chair, any other sir? questions? I, I yes. do have one, yes. Well, actually, it's less of a question, more of a statement. Um, I, I was able to look at uh, the Google Street View of the residents in question, um, and there is a timeline or a time 
back in time feature uh, went back to 2011 when before the house was demolished and rebuilt and the fence there in that picture is the is just like the existing fence at seven feet so at least back nine years for for proof uh, that fence has been there in that height for what that's worth all right thank you member Roten uh, any additional comments from the board? This is Steve Turner. I've got a question for county staff. Yes. No, not yet. So can you give us a little bit of background? Why, why do we have rules that their that fences should only be seven feet tall? Um, it's part of our development standard. Um, so in, in any residential area, um, it's just the the maximum height can be seven feet um, and any any difference to this uh, to the height needs to go through a minor use permit process uh, or sorry a special development permit process what we're doing here so does that answer your question it does thank you okay thank you okay Turner any additional questions or comments from the board All right, I'll reserve my comment until after public comment. Is there any public comment? We have no public comments on this item. All right. Uh, well, then uh, at the chair's prerogative, uh, I would make a motion to the item. Uh, and while doing so, I uh, appreciate and understand the role of 311, uh, and I understand and appreciate the role of code and code enforcement. However, there are times I believe that uh, a little authority goes uh, far too long away, and sometimes people go a little bit mad with power, uh, especially since I see this was called in during the early days of the pandemic. You can imagine there were a few people who were looking to cut off some steam, but um, for a fence that is a mere foot over zoning ordinance, I think this is an entirely appropriate item. and. I hope it passes with flying colors before the zoning board. So that is my motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Yes. Uh, second. I heard a second by Member Scavarla, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, clerk, you have a first and a second. All right. And so just to go through roll here, Member Roten. Uh, uh, yay. Uh, Schiff, Member Schiff. Yes. Member Turner. Yes. Member Biller. Aye. Member Scavala. Aye. And Chairperson Swears. Aye. All right, and that is a unanimous vote. All right, thank you for your time. All right, uh, moving on, I see no other pending active items before the board. Uh, project uh, planning items before the board. Um, we do now have uh, community input uh, on Sacramento County fiscal year 22-23 budget priorities. Uh, Clerk, do you have a presentation for this? Um, uh, planning mean? staff would have this presentation. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Apologies. Yes. Planning staff, do you have a presentation for this? Hi, yes. Um, good evening. This is Kimber Gutierrez. Can everyone he hear me okay? Okay, perfect. Um, so um, I'm a senior planner with um, Planning and Environmental Review, um, and I will be providing the introductory remark for this item. Um, the Board of Supervisors recently approved their 2021-2022 um, budget. Um, they are on a fiscal year of July 1st through June 30th, so we are only a couple of months into the 2021-2022 budget. Um, in your agenda packet is a summary of the recently adopted budget. And as part of the adoption process, the board provided direction to county staff um, in preparing next year's 2022-2023 budget. Um, the board's direction was to conduct some preliminary outreach to boards and commissions with the intention of using the feedback and comments received to create outreach materials. Um, to the general public. Um, this preliminary outreach does include the Arden Arcade CPAC. 
um, and more specifically, the board is seeking input about priorities um, and where the county should be investing budget resources. Um, so what we are asking of the CPAC tonight for this item is to provide some input and feedback on where the county should be prioritizing its budget resources. Um, and the clerk of the board's office will be recording your comments and will be providing them to the county staff preparing the budget materials um, for the outreach materials, as well as to the board of supervisors. So I am available to answer any questions. And if there are none, I am looking forward to hearing um, all of your feedback. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, are there any comments from members of the board or question for the planning uh, clerk's office? Yeah, uh, with the, this is um, Nick Scarella. Just wanted to kind of bring uh, something to light. Uh, AB 175, which is part of the California State. Um, and it has provisions in it to allow um, the county to enter into pallet's position on parking lot Z um, for homeless camping for up to five years. Um, and while that's laudable and, and there's a number of provisions prioritize folks camping parkway. And hey, hey Mick, make you're, Mick, you're cutting in and out. Uh, we, we couldn't hear that early comment. Yeah, just sorry about that. Um, is this better? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of uh, make comment about AB 175 being signed tonight, uh, which provides provisions for parking lot Z at Cal Expo to, uh, for the county and the state to enter into agreement for that to be uh, you know, temporary um, housing and, and camping for homelessness. And, and while the goals of the, the provisions are laudable and the prioritization of what population should be served are great, I, I think we want to make sure that the, um, for the, public health of, of the individuals, as well as the businesses and the community and walking distance of that, uh, um, of that parking lot, that we make sure that the, you know, law enforcement and other kind of county services are prioritized in that region but to ensure that there's not undue impact to the communities in and around. You know, that, uh, we have a lot to, to do in that area. Um, Getting them off of the river parkway, you know, out of the river parkway is is uh, you know, better for the environment and, and a number of other public health aspects. But we want to make sure that bringing them to Cal Expo is not going to impact the uh, community or, or the kids that didn't see in high school or anything um, that is walking distance. Well said, thank you, Member Scavarla. Uh, any additional comments from members of the CPAC? Yeah, I'd like to piggyback on that. I, I think it's less about law enforcement and being sure that there is proper services for them. Um, so the Health and Human, Human Services Department being able to pro properly provide them with uh, mental health services, um, drug intervention, uh, other things that are less invasive than uh, law enforcement being in their face. Thank you, Member Roden. Any additional comments? Okay, and there are no further uh, comments on this either. Okay, uh, then I'll, I'll close with one last comment. Um, I, I'm just going to echo what uh, Member Scavarla and Member Roten said. Uh, I would also strongly encourage uh, the board to partner with uh, non governmental organizations, uh, including those like Wellspace Health, uh, a federally qualified health center that operates several uh, facilities within the county territory. Uh, to partner uh, to provide wraparound mental health services. There is going to be some state money coming through uh, to serve uh, crisis mental health populations. I would strongly encourage the board to look at uh, innovative solutions to providing wraparound services on site to the extent uh, that these folks are going to be congregating, take advantage of that. Uh, I would also strongly encourage the board uh, to be very, very circumspect in how they spend. Uh, or identify project home key sites for homeless housing. Same thing we deal with on the CPAC quite often, which is 
Anytime we talk about congregations of uh, SRO housing or uh, the proliferation of liquor licenses, uh, we usually see those as things that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, I think the same goes for any kind of congregation of uh, Project Home Key Housing, just to make sure that we're not burdening one aspect of the community while uh, putting an additional burden uh, on that community versus uh, making sure that all communities within the Sacramento region all bear those things equally. Uh, the only other thing I would also point out um, is that it is uh, my hope that the county takes very seriously uh, the need to invest sustainable water supplies, uh, long-term water supplies, as we've seen pandemic, as we've seen uh, through the drought, as we've seen with the reduction in supplies coming from the Colorado River, uh, the increasing changing climate uh, has meant that water has become more scarce. Uh, there are several innovative projects within the city of Sacramento, including uh, the water bank, that have taken a proactive approach to providing for the long-term supply for the uh, uh, fresh drinking water supply of the city, I would encourage the county to consider those likewise, to make it a priority in, the, in both the short and the long term, uh, and to take advantage of whatever innovative, innovative solutions are provided by the state and federal government. Uh, and the last least thing, uh, not the last, not the least, but the last thing I will say is also our community, the Arden Arcade community is one of, if not the largest home to the Afghan refugee population. Uh, we know that more are coming. There will be federal support uh, in terms of financial support for those individuals. Um, but we would also like to remind uh, the county that uh, our community has opened our arms, the Afghan refugees, uh, but there is still a number of challenges, including which uh, uh, individuals living in and around the Fulton Corridor, issues of public safety and public health, like to make sure that we don't just welcome them in and then throw them to the wolves, that we follow up and we support these communities with access to services and integrating them uh, deeper into the community. So that is the last comment I have on this item and I thank uh, the Planning Commission for the presentation. All right, well, next moving on here to item three, which is the staff update. Hi, this is Kimber um, again for a staff update. Um, I'm sure you all know that um, Manuel Mejia, who is a senior planner um, for our traditional communities, um, retired back in July, I believe. Um, so I, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Kimber <laughs> and um, I am Basically, Manuel's replacement. I'm the new senior planner for the traditional communities. Um, so I, I will be overseeing the Arden Arcade community as well um, and projects going on in that area. Um, so just wanted to introduce myself formally and I'm looking forward to um, working with you all. Well, welcome, Kimber. And we promise to be gentle. <laughs> Thank you. And that's um, all I have for staff update. This is Alma from the Clerk of the Board's Office. I have some updates as well. Um, so uh, James Kirsten, who is clerking the meeting today, um, is filling uh, the position that Eric DeLosta vacated. Eric um, was the clerk for the Arden Arcade CPAC and he promoted to a posi another position within the county. So James is training today. And then we also have um, Stephanie Townsend's replacement. Her name is Rochelle Rolanka. And so if you need anything related to CPAC, you can always reach um, Rochelle or myself, um, email us both, and then one of us will um, help you with whatever you need. So that, are, that concludes the announcements for the clerk's office. Thank you. Well, uh, I mean, I guess it's a great thing that the people who've uh, help the CPAC are moving on to bigger and better things. Uh, welcome to the both of you. We look forward to working with you and hopefully uh, just like uh, Miss Gutierrez, we don't scare you away either. <laughs> Thank you. I will try to uh, refine myself a little bit more. <laughs> oh, it's the Arden Arcade. You don't need to get refined. Don't put on it. We're, we're not Land Park. 
or the Fab 40s. It's okay. Um, uh oh. Careful, this is getting recorded. Uh, okay, moving on. Council member comments. Uh, does any council member have any comments they'd like to make uh, unrelated to the agenda items tonight? All right. Uh, last but certainly not least, public comment. We have no public comment. Well, that was easy then. All right. Well, then on that note, uh, happy September, everyone. Thank you for participating. Uh, and unless there's any other items, DPAC meeting is adjourned. All right. Everybody have a great rest of your evening. Thank, Thank you much. You.